All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can inflate text dynamically. Now, uh, this is something that you could do previously, but with the new cloth soft body system dynamics really in um, 2023, uh, the previous technique that you might find online just doesn't seem to work anymore. And while you can still do it not dynamically using Pose More for even Cloner, um, I wanted to see if I could come up with something that was still dynamic. You can actually still use this with um, Postmorph or the cloner technique as well. Um, so you have plenty of different options, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is ultimately what we're gonna be doing here, creating a setup that when we pull this linear field through, inflates. Okay, now it doesn't look quite as good. I still think there's some refinement we can do, um, but ultimately I think that looks pretty nice. Um, and so that's what we're gonna see how to do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this letter though and copy it into a new file so we can get started. But I don't want the linear field or the tag. I really just want this vertex map, which I will talk more about here uh, shortly. So we're gonna start by creating our text and this could be anything you want it to be. I'm gonna to want to use the letter B just like I did previously. And I went with Franklin Gothic Heavy. I do think this technique does benefit from thicker, bolder text, but it should work on anything. And now I need to give this enough segments and edges to work. And this is gonna be a two part process. One is gonna be doing it in our text object by switching this to natural increasing the amount substantially, as well as adding some subdivisions. And I actually saw part of this technique on a different video that showed how to do inflatable text, but using Pose Morph. So um, I was really happy to see this as I thought it was a great way to get um, polygons that were more regular size. Oops, I want smaller actually. So something like that ought to work. And what we're gonna do is use the good old remesh. So that was the part that I thought was really really smart. And you can see now how our polygons are pretty much all the same size. You know, just the edge flow is so much better and this will make a big difference when it comes to the cloth. So I'll just make this editable. And then the next thing you want to do is to create a vertex map. Okay, now this part isn't absolutely necessary, but I do think it does add some, some of the smaller details. Um, we're gonna go to our paint tool and right click on our mesh and go to other tags, vertex map. Probably could have just done that instead of pulling up the paint tool as well. But you can always go back to that paint tool option to pull up the attributes if you accidentally click off and you know go to something else, but still want to come back in, um, edit it. So what we need to do now is kind of paint in some of the lines and wrinkles. So I can just kind of come through here and essentially this is what I did all the way around. Um, and after doing this, and I'm just doing this really quickly, Okay, after doing this, you may also want to um, smooth this out a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that here shortly. Um, but I'm just trying to get something, you know, to work with, at least temporarily. Um, once you're kind of happy with this, you may want to smooth this out, especially if you're seeing a lot of kind of weird shading or, you know, things like that. You can switch the mode here to smooth hit apply all, and it will kind of smooth things out a little bit. But ultimately, how straight or how smooth these lines are does depend on the number of polygons. Now we do wanna be a bit careful uh, because you know dynamics, rigid body, cloth, all of that uh, can bog down, even crash if we throw too many polygons at it. So just keep that in mind. But ultimately, that is how I ended up with something like this, except that I also um, inverted it. Okay, um, although honestly, it looks the opposite um, as it did, but yeah, so I have my invert on here and just lowered the opacity and I found the invert right here. Okay, so that way it inflates the areas that are not the wrinkles. Okay, all right, from there, we're gonna want to go to our project settings, come here to the simulation section and then scene and set the gravity to zero. Okay, um, now I personally do prefer to use the CPU, but as I've been doing my tests and everything, I've been working with the GPU uh, as set my device. Um, so definitely experiment with that. I have found the CPU a bit more um, stable, but honestly, I haven't had too many issues with it with this file and doing this type of thing. Now what I'm gonna do is add a cloth tag to 
my uh, letter here. And now when we hit play, we see very little, right? And at this point, this is still cloth. We want to uh, turn a soft body on to create a soft body from it. And if you want to get rid of all these lines, we just switch the draw here to off since we really won't be doing too many of those. And even now still not seeing much. There's a couple of different things we can do and want to experiment with. Um, the one I'll get out of the way right now is balloon. This one is really cool, really handy for inflating. But the problem with this is we don't have a way to control this with fields. And so while you can inflate text using this, um, you have to use that cloner or pose morph, pose morph method that um, I think I'll have time to show at the end uh, in order to use it. And we can see it's not perfect on its own. Um, but honestly, it's not a bad start. So, all right. I'm going to come here to soft body and start with my target length and maybe up that to say 175. And you can see how that immediately inflates this. Now, any place you see this option to twirl something down and that says map, we can use our vertex map. Okay. So when we hit play, you can see now it's really just kind of inflating um, our wrinkles. And so that's where that invert comes in handy. Um, if you want kind of the opposite or how much of that effect uh, you want to contribute. So that's what um, that does. It helps just break things up, make things look a little more wrinkled. Now, as you'll notice, the letter does tend to drift, okay? And the way we can kind of uh, slow that down is by adding a friction and increasing the strength. Now, really all this does is just kind of slow certain things down, okay? Um, but as you can see, it doesn't completely uh, get rid of it, which is another reason to consider the non-dynamic method. Um, I'm still refining this. I definitely think there's room for improvement, but as of right now, this is kind of what um, I have. We can also um, work with the minimum target length, but the problem with that is with it being less than 100, it doesn't work really with uh, the um, fields and you know, transition we are going to have here since there's no way to apply a map to it. So um, keep that at its default. I've, this is really moving a lot more than what I was seeing previously in this one. Um, so I'm not sure what the difference is there. But oh, well, uh, let's talk about what else we can do. In the plastic deformation, um, we can use a couple of these. And just by turning them on, we'll see some other differences. It's actually beginning to resemble it, slow things down. Um, we can always smooth this out as well by throwing it into a subdivision surface. So how much of these effects you want is entirely up to you. Once again, we could add our map here and you can even create multiple versions of this map, one inverted, one not, and use those. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. To me, uh, one last place we can go is in our surface section. Um, now this is more cloth, right? That's what this tag is, you know, really built for aside from the soft body section. Um, and we can throw some of our maps in here as well. If you want to experiment it, you know, we have another target length. Okay. So we could see what this does. Okay. I think it kind of smooth things out, which I'm all about. Right. So I think that looks good. Um, but I would also experiment with bendiness and stretchiness as well. So let's say this is what you wanted. Okay, you were happy with this. And honestly, I've pushed it too far, but I would rather have it too far and then have to dial things back uh, than, you know, not have enough of this inflate. And just for fun, let's turn on balloon one more time and just kind of look at, um, you know, if it would be any better. And honestly, you know, I'm not so sure it is better. Though I do know if we had worked with some of our other settings, getting using balloon does actually make it look good in the end. So cool. How do we make this, um, uh, transition from this to this? Because, you know, we don't want it to happen all at once. That is where we can come back to our uh, vertex map here. We are going to check in this. Actually, it's already turned on in your vertex map. Um, you would want to check use field. So because I already had this one, um, I checked it on, but just for fun, let's create a new object with a vertex map so you can see where that is. And it's in your tag, you just check use fields. 
Okay. Honestly, I don't know how you uncheck use fields. Um, but yeah, so that's all I did. And I think I kind of glossed over that with, oops, with this previously. Um, but now what I want to do is add a linear field. Okay. Now the linear field right now is set to max, which means it's going to inflate more on the right side, but still also inflate on the left. Um, because really what I want is subtract. I want it to take it to the minimum on the vertex map here. Okay. So that when I pull this through, then we apply it. And so if we've done everything right, when we hit play, the letter really shouldn't change. Okay. And it does. So what we need to do now is figure out what property, uh, is causing that change. And I suspect it may be something in our surface section. So let's set this to 100 and get rid of, oops, our claw. So that was part of the problem is I didn't drag my actual vertex map in there. I dragged in um, the cloth tag, which I'm not sure what that was doing, but there's my vertex map. Let's see, I don't, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I can put this back to where it was. It was just the fact I had um, not dragged in my vertex map there. And now when I take my linear field and drag this through, we will see it inflate. Now, unfortunately, if I was to drag this back through, it doesn't completely deflate. Although, honestly, it comes pretty darn close. Definitely a lot closer than in my other file. Um, but you can see how we're able to dynamically inflate text now. We just can't dynamically uninflate text. All right. So, like I said, that's actually not too bad there. Um, so with that, let's see how we can do this with um, the pose morph, maybe even the cloner as well. Um, what I'm gonna do is duplicate my T here and really just kind of reset it. It doesn't need anything. And I'm gonna call this T original. Okay. And we can call this T inflated. And honestly, I think we can just keep it like this. Um, but I'm gonna hide the inflated one. On my original, I'm going to add the pose morph tag, which can be found under rigging. Okay. And I can then tell this we want to mix points between different objects. I'm going to get rid of pose zero. Base pose is good enough. That'll be our original. And we could rename this original. Drag in my inflated. And I am going to do this as an absolute since they were in the same spot. Oh no. Um, so I'm going to undo that. Make sure I rewind. Drag in my inflated. Make it absolute. And so now when I switch the mode here to animate. Okay. Ah, so it isn't working. Interesting. It was before. But what we could do is come here and just do a um, current state to object which should bake in, well, if we actually had this deformed at all. So I'll just hit play a little bit to a current, current state to object now. Right. Interesting that I can't see it. Wonder what the deal is with that. Hmm. All right. So let's see. Oh, there, well, there was a problem. My linear field. It's probably why this wasn't working. Awesome. So let's go back to the pose morph. And now you can see that we can control this as well if we hide this one again. Okay. Non-dynamically. All right. But you also still get those dynamics in there. Right. So I could set this to 0%. Come here to 30%, keyframe it at 100. Just do a little hold. And then take this down to 0%. So it is still possible to do this. Okay. And have it transition from dynamic and inflatable to not dynamic and inflatable. So that's definitely what I would do. Um, I wasn't hundred percent certain that was going to work, but it did. Um, I was also very surprised how the linear field moving that back, um, kind of killed it 
and brought it back to pretty close to original as well. So a couple of different ways you can work with that depending on what you think is going to suit your needs. So that will do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It was actually a requested video. So, you know, I'm not all talk here when at the end I say, if there's anything else you would like to see, just let me know. Uh, I make no promises, um, but definitely worth a shot. You can leave a comment down below. Um, and uh, that will do it for this one. So take care.